Hi, and welcome to the first of what I hope will be a series of videos of me playing through the career mode of the new beta version of KSP. As I work through the career, I'll highlight and talk about a few of the mods that I like to play with. So we'll start ourselves a new campaign. Click on over, pick a flag. Uh, the Canada flag, by the way, comes from uh, the Parody Flags flag pack. Play a moderate. I'll take the reverts off just to sort of keep myself honest. I'll take a look at these. These all look pretty good. Uh, I did play around a little bit with hard uh, when I was first playing around with the beta and I took really one look at what it would cost to upgrade some of those buildings and said, uh, no, I can't do that much grinding, so that's it. So yeah, we'll get rid of Gene here. We know what we want to talk about. And right away, I want to talk about this uh, mod I got here called uh, Kerbal Construction Time. Kerbal Construction Time adds a time element. You don't just build things instantly and they give you these upgrade points. I spent almost all of my upgrade points on the vehicle assembly building because that's what I'm going to be using for the first little bit. I'll put a couple of points towards research and development because it'll take some time to research some tech. Um, mm -hmm. We'll also do uh, pick up some contracts. We'll launch a new vessel, the obvious first one, and we'll shoot for this uh, altitude record of five kilometers. That seems like a, a relatively obvious one to go for at the beginning. And that all looks pretty good. So, we'll jump over to, there's not much else to do, so we'll jump over to the vehicle assembly building. And uh, we'll get ourselves going here. So we'll build ourselves a ship. This will be a very, very basic ship. Uh, we're going to need a parachute. Uh, we'll need some fuel tanks. We'll need some, uh, I'm going to go with the liquid fuel engine. I want to pause on what we got going on here under the science part, though, a little bit. We have these Kerbal Engineer parts, and there's a variety of them here. I like this one that kind of looks like a tape recorder. And what this adds is some building and flight data. And as you can see up there on the left, we have our delta V, and we have our thrust-to-weight ratio. And I'll be talking about delta V and thrust-to-weight ratio in some detail, but just very, very briefly... Delta V essentially measures the ability of your ship to change its velocity, while thrust away, TWR, uh, measures how much uh, acceleration your, your ship has in comparison to its own weight. And we'll talk about that in more detail in just a little bit. In the meantime, I need to add a few more chutes. Now, I don't have any radial parachutes, so I'm going to use this little trick... Um, with uh, the, the, the modular girders to uh, add a couple of uh, the regular chutes on the side there. And, and this should, should uh, give me enough parachute weights to be able to land this thing safely. Um, I got way too much fuel, so I want to take the fuel out of the bottom tank. And if you take a look, you can see that the delta V has gone down from me doing that. Now, the reason I took it out of the bottom tank is because I want the center of mass of my vehicle to be as high as possible. And I also want the center of lift, or really the center of drag when it comes to rockets, to be as low as possible. And you can see how much effect moving these girders up and down really do have. And I wanted to have it low. On, a, on, a, on any kind of a rocket, you want your center of lift really quite a bit below the center of mass. Um, and this makes it act a little bit more really kind of like a dart, right? You want that mass up at the front. You want the center of drag at the back. And that will give it a lot more stability. Now, one of the things Kerbal Construction Time gives me is this ability to simulate. You see, it's $19 to run a simulation. If I built it and uh, it turned out not to work, well, first of all, it's going to take time for me to build that. You'll see once I build this how this works. And if I end up wasting all that time and also the cost of building this rocket. But what I can do is I can spend this $19 or curb bucks or whatever they are, and I can run this little simulation. Um, and the simulation is timed. I got 15 minutes to run this simulation. And right off the bat, I notice, whoa, I'm going way, way too fast. So I revert back to the editor. And yes, that cost me $19, but so what's the big deal? So what I want to do is I want to reduce my thrust. And you can see my thrust to weight coming down. I like to get that thrust to weight down, I don't know, a little close to about 1.7, I think, for this rocket would be good. Um, and that should be something that will take off with a little less uh, jarring force on our poor little Kerbinot. So we're going to run this simulator again, and again, another $19, but so what? We'll close this off. We've got another 15 minutes to play around, so we'll put the thrust up. We'll put the uh, SAS on, and we'll just kind of shoot on up here. And this is taking off at a much more saner, um, 
I'm going to roll it over to, I don't know, it seems to look better, because I'm going to angle it over to the water, so I'm going to turn it a bit east. That seems to be, uh, I don't know, maybe those little girders are acting like wings. Probably not, but I don't know, it looks better this way. Notice as well the display over there on the left, the flight engineer that's coming again from the Kerbal Engineer part. And I want to keep, I'm looking at the apoapsis height, which is the very top of my trajectory. I don't want to get much above five kilometers, so I'm already slowing down because I'm getting close. I'm at 4.5 kilometers right now, angling a little bit more because I do want to land in the water. And uh, making my way up, and there I go. My Apoapsis is now five kilometers. Now I will lose some height because the atmosphere, once I turn my engine off, so I went a little bit past. You can see my apoapsis going down, but I'm already over, so that's cool. And now we're going to start going down. So I'm going to assume the going backwards position, and I'm going to activate my parachutes. There they go. And now I'm going downwards. And one of the things I'm starting to realize at this point is I really do want to get over the, not just land in the water, but get in the water biome. So I'm trying to use the lift in the rocket itself, in the body of the rocket, to affect my trajectory. Um, I was finding it hard doing it engine first, so I turned around going tail first. It seems more stable that way. And now you can see it really is starting to move more towards the right of the screen. I am definitely getting lift off of the body and that's thanks to another mod that I have called Near, which is made by the same people that make Ferrum Aerospace and these are mods that make the uh, aerodynamics model of KSP more realistic. Now that sound you just heard were the chutes fully deploying so now I've gone down to a nice much more stately 6.2 meters per second I'm falling nicely everything seemed to work so I'm gonna revert back to the editor and now we're gonna do this for reels. So back to the editor we go. Uh, again, I hit the launch button, but this time I'm going to hit build. And what ends up happening is I don't go to the launch pad like you see. What I end up is putting that ship into the building queue. And I can open up the building queue here, and you can see that it's going to take 10 days for me to build this ship, but thankfully I can just warp to that. So we warp out. We're now 10 days into the future. It's now day 11. All right, and there we go. Done. It's, it stops automatically, which is really nice, and it gives you these little uh, alarm clock warnings, which is great. Now, it's going to take 10 hours, or what is that, 50 minutes, sorry, to roll the ship out to the launch pad. So that's an additional time, but again, we'll warp that out, and we're now in the morning, day 11. And again, it stops automatically for us, which is great. And now our ship is ready. So we go to the vehicle assembly building. We hit the launch button. We can choose our crew, but uh, definitely want Jebediah for our very first mission. So we hit the launch. And there it is, all ready to go. And we're going to just basically do the exact same thing we did with uh, the previous one, except we're going to collect us some science. So we do a crew report here on the launch pad. Then I'm going to EVA out. I'm going to do an EVA report, which counts as flying above the shores, which is, I know, very strange. And then it's this trick of taking the science out of the command capsule, storing it again. That frees up the command capsule to do another uh, crew report. So we will launch. And since this is exactly the same, I'm just going to cut to the top of our trajectory. Again, the parachutes. And I like these. These are real shoots, by the way, from the real shoot mod. And I kind of like the way they look. So we'll go with it. Now we'll do our crew report. If I can just click it here. There we go. Crew report. We're still above Kerbin Shore, so we'll save that. We're falling down. And again, I really would love to land in the water biome. So I'm going to try and angle this out a bit. But once again, it wants to go frontwards. That's the way it's the most aerodynamically stable. So that's fine. You know and we'll lean out that way and again you can see I'm getting that lift I mean I'll be the first to admit this is more falling than it is flying but I am definitely getting lift off the body of that rocket and that's definitely pushing me towards the right further towards the east and there goes our chutes once our chutes go the whole ship wants to go that way go back tail down
The one thing I do want to do is when I land, I want to make sure that I land with the capsule door upward. So I'm leaning just a little bit this way so the capsule door is up so it'll guarantee fall that way because if the capsule door falls down um, and it's under the water, I won't be able to get out and do some more EVAs, which wouldn't be cool. Here we go, down. Good. And then we're going to do ourselves a little bit of science here, of course. We're going to get on out, do an EVA report. We're flying above Kerbin Shores, but I'm pretty sure I already got a flying above Kerbin Shores. So I'll try and store it in there, and it tells me that it can't store it in there because it already has a Kerbin Shores. I try it again because I'm kind of stubborn that way. I take the data and store it again anyway. I try to go in and final confirmation, it tells me I can't take all the data I have with me, which of course is that Kerbin Shore. I do do a crew report from uh, the surface of Kerbin sh Shores in the water. That's great. I finally get out, and you don't have to get in the water. Here, look, I'll take the EVA report. And you can see I am from Kerbin Shores. I'm on the surface. I don't have to get in the water. I can stand on the capsule itself, get inside, and we're all done. That's all the science we're going to be able to get. So do a recover the vessel. And we'll take a look at our booty here. So we pulled 18 science out of that. We have a total of 23 now, so that's great. We got uh, some, some funds back. Jebediah got a little bit of experience. Even some medals. We'll talk about that mod somewhere along. These are the notifications that we completed the mission. So that's great. We'll get rid of those. We don't need those anymore. And we'll go spend our science. So obviously we're going to unlock this basic rocketry mod or uh, node. We got 18 and a half science left, and that's enough to get either stability or the survivability. And as nice as the um, radial parachutes are and survivability, I want those tail fins that come with stability because with the near aerodynamics, uh, those tail fins are going to help me a lot. And if you notice, if I open up uh, Kerbal Construction Time, that it's going to take time to get these tech nodes unlocked. It's going to take a day for basic rocketry and four days for um, for the stability one, but that's just the way it is. I got a couple extra points to spend because every time you open up a tech node, you get more points to spend, so I'll put a point towards uh, R&D and I'll put a point towards the VAB, and then it's time to pick a new, a couple of new contracts, but I think I'm going to have to leave that for next episode. So uh, until then, we'll see ya.